Hi. So this year, it's already the 20th edition of the European Week of Regions and Cities. And so I have with me some guests today to talk about different subjects. But mainly, we're going to speak about uh, the impact of the Ukrainian war. So today with me, we have uh, Mireya Soleyort. You are from the delegation of the Catalan government to the EU. And then we also have Mindaugas uh, Sinkevicius, and you are the mayor of Yonova municipality uh, in Lithuania. Thank you both for being here today. So maybe we can start uh, with uh, talking about uh, what has brought maybe the, the European Week uh, of regions and cities to mm. Catalonia, for example. But Catalonia was one of the ten offices who launched the, in 2013 the European Week of Regions and Cities. Then it was called Open Days. And in fact, it was opening our offices to show uh, what we, are, we were doing in Brussels and what we were doing at home. And then we began to work with uh, different partners to show uh, best practices on, uh, or send the message. And so you're talking about best practices. What does best it mean practices, concretely? It, it, dep oh, it depends on the, of the subject. One, for example, on roads that uh, uh, has been, are being used to generate energy, for example. Okay. This is, was one. It was in 2020, the worst year when the COVID and everything was online. It was quite complicated. For example, this is, this is one. Then uh, we brought examples of working together in the framework of the um, community of work of Pyrenees, mm -hmm. that is from all the regions alongside the Pyrenees in France and, and in Spain. And we share best practices in cross-border cooperation, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, I will ask you the same question, Mindaugas. Mm. Well, actually, I enjoy this, uh, this week. Uh, it's always about uh, the hot topics because we have those you know, buzzwords, innovation, going green, digitalization, and so on, so on. So, but practically, it's always what are the real projects behind that? Mm -hmm. So what are those, are, what, what is being done? So not to invent, you know, the wheel, it's sometimes very useful to see what others are actually mm -hmm. doing and just bring it back home and do it again, repeat it, and as a good ex experience. When I come to this event, I always, you know, surprised, you know, by how much uh, we're innovative and how, how many things uh, are to be done or already been done. Uh, so that's really a unique opportunity while coming and really uh, bringing good ideas back home. Your, of course, both of your regions were impacted by uh, COVID uh, and also by the, the Ukrainian uh, war. Mm. Can you maybe tell me a, a bit more uh, uh, about this, Mireya? Well, the COVID it was a, a, a shock at the first yes, because everything was closed. Nobody knows how to cope with that. And then progressively, we, everything was running and functioning again. Maybe the, the recovery plan was something yes. that was useful? It's very useful, but uh, there is a problem. Okay. Together with uh, 30 regions of 10 uh, countries, we have um, presented to different institutions. We have uh, made a letter uh, because the regions have not been taken into account in the national recovery and resilience plans. Why? They are, Why do you They think are very centralized. centralized. Mm -hmm. It was a thing that, yes, it was uh, quickly. You have to prepare it quickly. And in almost all these regions that uh, form the Regions for EU Recovery Initiative, uh, we have seen that nor in the design, nor in the implementation phase, we have been taken into account. And what were some of the problems that Catalonia had that were not taken into account, in your opinion? Well, we, we had a plan not taken into account, for example. Uh, they say that they will send us uh, thousands of euros in mm -hmm. order to buy books for the libraries. Or uh, there is another one uh, for um, healthcare residents, for mm -hmm. older people. This is a thing that we do usually. So we don't need this money. We need this money more to help SMEs to make the green and digital transitions. 
this is things that we thought that could be more useful. And Mindaugas, yeah. does your region uh, encounter the same problems? Do you think there are some things to improve, maybe? Well, I think if whole Europe and the whole world encountered the same uh, uh, problem named COVID, and actually the problem haven't, hasn't disappeared. So that's an ongoing uh, topic. Another topic that was, uh, was uh, coming and was also not expected at all is the war mm. in Ukraine and, and, uh, and the Russian site and the invasion there. And therefore, we had a really uh, high numbers of refugees coming in. At least in my municipality, it's like 500 people living, and mainly are those children and, 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 and women. Uh, all in all, more than 50,000 in my country. But I know that in, in uh, neighboring countries like Poland, it's more than 3 million of people coming in and finding shelter and safety. So it brought a lot of, a lot of new issues and topics that we were not ready for. And of course, uh, it's happy to say that the uh, European Commission really made some legislative changes and allowed to borrow money for public spending for various needs because we had to really cope. It was like fire going on and you don't have to, time to waste and you have to do something about it. But next to it all, we really somehow live in an era when uh, there are sudden cases like COVID, like war, but there are ongoing topics that you actually were present 10 years or 20 years ago. Which one, like, for, for example? Uh, like uh, climate, uh, climate change and how do we adapt to that. Uh, there's uh, digitalization, uh, there's Industry 4.0, and we have to be ready for that. So, and actually, this uh, cohesion policy and the various programs uh, really help many municipalities and many mayors uh, tend to to use this opportunity to transform into smart cities, as we call them. What does it mean? It means that we're monitoring pollution. We have a program and intentions to have uh, benches outside in the parks. We're actually sitting on the bench and looking at the color. It, uh, it uh, green, yellow, red. You can know what's the air quality around you. Mm -hmm. So there are many other interesting things when, for instance, there's a traffic uh, lights uh, and a car comes in and if there's still a red light but it will uh, soon in a second start a green light the motor of the vehicle connects with the lighting system and doesn't shut down not to start the engine again and not to pollute mm -hmm. so uh, we're really transforming our public transport uh, our first bus ever like it was you know, almost like a miracle uh, that was uh, using uh, uh, electricity alone. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many things uh, that are being done, already done, uh, thousands of projects spread all over in Lithuania and Europe. But of course, coming to your second half of the question, what, how can we make mm. it uh, better? I think that my colleague was saying that, and stressing that local municipalities, cities, and regions have to be involved. There is no, I think that's, that's ancient to, to have this bottom, uh, top down approach. That mm -hmm. there are some, you know, serious politicians deciding what to do in my city. So thank them for that, but I know better what to do because I was elected there and uh, people know me and I know what people are seeking for. And do you think, do you feel that uh, there is already maybe uh, some progress in that sense? Is this uh, discussion going on? Yeah, discussion is going on, but you know, it's a really, sometimes those big politicians, national, European, tend to, you know, make things faster. The fastest way is not, not consulting, not talking, mm. and, you know, deciding mm. in small cabinets, maybe among some, you know, top mm. managers. And uh, when you involved, involve municipalities, regions, it's a lot of discussion, it's a lot of debate, it's a lot of, it's, the process is prolonged. But at the end, the result is better. And that, I think that involvement of regional politicians, uh, stakeholders is very important. You have to find a balance here, most probably yeah. some kind of golden, golden rule. Or yeah, not so easy. Not so easy <laughs> thing, that's all. Um, so we talked about the, mm. the problems that your regions are mm. facing now, but now maybe uh, we could talk about uh, the future. 
Um, so, Mireya, um, for Catalonia, uh, do you see in the future some uh, problems that the regions will be that the region will be facing, and well, that you need to? Not that is a. It's not a problem, but um, we have to make the green and digital transitions, and that it's not easy to do. You can not destroy one thing, since you have to make it progressively. And uh, for example, that is now we are trying to look solutions and to help, for example, the automotive sector. Another thing concerning digitalization. In the big cities, there is no problem. You have uh, um, digital infrastructures everywhere. But the problem is in the sparsely areas. And that the Catalan government is, is working to expand the broadband in all these areas, in the mountains or where is a, there's a few people, because the companies are not interested. Mm -hmm. So this is a thing that, for example, we are doing and we will do using uh, cohesion, uh, pol uh, cohesion funds. This is priority. Another thing is uh, to all the questions related to science, health science or another one. And this is why we are in investing in, for example, we have uh, infrastructures like the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing that we made and we have thanks to cohesion and we will develop. And uh, for your region, um, is it facing more or less the same problems or something completely yeah, there different? there are common problems, of course. I would echo my colleagues' uh, thoughts um, that we also have to look at digitalization. Mm -hmm. And there are also small and medium enterprises present. Uh, we, need, we have to trans, transform. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of issues uh, related to environment and uh, ecological living standards. For instance, in my municipality, we have a, a huge fertilizer company that's one of the biggest pollution, polluters in the country. So how will the company transform not to pollute or pollute less uh, so there's, uh, of course, other instruments like Just Transition Fund, mm -hmm. so to make to make things happen. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of uh, obstacles and, uh, of course, at the same time, opportunities. So we're looking forward. Well, uh, I want to thank you both. I think uh, it was good to also mention a bit the challenges that uh, both of your regions are, are facing. Um, and I also want to thank you uh, for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.